starting the stream. And it just started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 201. I, I hit record, and then it, like, locked for a second, so I didn't think it went through, and then boom. Uh, episode 201 of Hotline League. Uh, it is just Mark and I. I just gave, like, a very long rant about this before the start of the thing, because Twitch chat was trying to create drama or something. We, we Obviously, we didn't do an episode last week. I'm sorry. I feel very bad about it. I actually felt really shitty about it last week. Um... We originally wanted to have LS on. There were some scheduling conflicts, so we tried to push it to Tuesday. The scheduling conflicts persisted. I was feeling um, pretty bad, and so it just was like, clearly this week is just not going to happen. I'm very happy we get I to felt... do it this week. What? Mark. Oh, what? I was going to say, I felt insecure, so I, I said, no LS. He's not allowed on. That's that's <laughs> yes. the truth. We're going to try to get I'm LS sorry, on at the start sorry, of next guys. year. Um, uh, we, we really want to have him on. I like uh, Trust me. Uh, uh, December is the time to, to do big stuff, uh, for like a CPM ad perspective, etc. I like uh, there, I am only financially and personally incentivized, uh, to do a big show with LS and all that stuff. So taking last week off felt really bad. And I felt, feel really bad to you guys. Cause we didn't have the, uh, a great way to communicate it to people who listen to the podcast and all that stuff. So, um, apologies for that, but I do think we're going to have a really fun episode, uh, let me go ahead and introduce, and I will explain why in a second. Let me go ahead and introduce my constant co-host, Mark Zimmerman. How's it going, Mark? Good. That's good. anything. It, what's anything else been going on with you lately? Uh, I've been streaming more. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Z I streamed Genshin. Uh, I was doing some Abyss clears today, and I'll probably mention this on Resident Refresh as well. But I got backseat gamed for the first time. Like, a, like you know. There's times where people like give advice and you kind of already know the advice or it's not good advice and you kind of have like a little bit of a discussion but like someone's not like going that hard on it. Uh, but I, I got I got backseat gamed and it was uh, it was pretty fun. First time for everything. By like an individual uh, or the chat. Like like one one person was yeah. like, I mean I'll get more into it on resin refresh, but it was it was funny. I was like oh my god this is like what I've been waiting for. You know this yeah. is why welcome I to streaming, streaming just any kind of video game. It TFT when I used to stream a lot of TFT and was climbing ladder. That was where it was really fucking annoying because that was a place where, like, normally I don't mind people giving me advice because oftentimes I feel like I'm I'm streaming in part to, like, have people help me learn stuff. Um, but that was a time where people, uh, people would drive me up the fucking wall because I was like, I am really confident in my understanding of the situation. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's it. that is one of the major downsides of streaming. It's very annoying. Um have you done anything lately? Did you see Spider-Man? Have no not spoilers. seen Spider-Man yet. Uh, no spoilers. Watched most of the season two of The Witcher. Haven't finished it yet. Okay. Um, we actually had to watch the Survivor finale tonight, which was surprising what happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been, been just watching tons of TV, as always. I uh, saw Spider-Man. Top, top three Marvel film for me now, I think. Highly recommend. Uh, and I've, I've just finished episode five of Witcher season two. So I think it's gone. It's gone. I think I'm a little ahead of you, but not much. Yeah. I'll probably finish it, um, tomorrow. So. Oh, good news. I was supposed to tell you this as well. I keep forgetting to tell you things. Uh, uh, Matrix is the 22nd, right? We could watch it. Oh, really? I I don't leave till Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we do that Wednesday night then or something. Yeah. Who knows if we can still get tickets, but. Yeah. Well, we'll try. Actually, it's crossing our fingers that it's booked up. Really? That can be our <laughs> little holiday thing. Uh, Scam Train is going, by the way. Thank you to everybody. Um, we got a minute left on it. I'll shout out some of those in a little bit. I, I also want to shout out uh, Game Fuel and Alienware and Prime Gaming for sponsoring this episode. We'll be talking about all three of them uh, throughout the episode, but that is awesome. Uh, so this, this episode is pretty cool because this is our last episode of the year, um, and what I have always done, I think, on all my shows um, throughout time, but definitely with Mark and I on Hotline League, is uh, we we take the last episode of the year and we kind of reflect on some of the biggest stories and trends from 2021 and like what, what we thought were really big moments and all that stuff. Mark is frowning because he doesn't remember that we do this every year. No, no. So. my I, it's, to, it's too much to explain. My computer's just being weird. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so that's what we do. Then we will be back, um, in, I probably think the first week of the new year. So we should probably have an episode on the third, unless Mark and I are 
not able to recover, and then we should be back by the 10th, but probably on the 3rd. Um, should only miss about one week. And uh, and we will be talking about our expectations for 2022 and what we think is going to happen there. Uh, but it should be a really fun episode. And, and by the way, this is where, for you guys that want to call in, uh, go ahead and you know the drill with Discord. I think a lot of you guys have been around for a long time. Um, you can I put I just put instructions in the chat, uh, but I think what we're looking for from you, all of you are what are the things that you wanted uh, or what did you th you think was really interesting about 2021? What were some of the big stories, some of the big trends like uh, for this season of LCS and League of Legends, etc.? Maybe you think yeah, um, this was the year that the bubble burst uh, in the off season. Maybe you think like wow the best part of the year for me was lock-in and I'm really excited about next year because I think that was like the best thing or you think right this was the worst year ever you think it was the best whatever you want uh, that's what we're looking for so reflect in this moment meditate on 2021 uh, some primers I think we can give you guys for things that happened in case you're struggling to remember everything this year was uh LCS got back in studio in summer after uh being uh you know remote for for over a year um we had our first live finals in spring there was that dope intro shot we had all the three the big three come over perks alfari and sword art sword art all three left uh you know <laughs> uh that was a, a hilarious little thing that happened you already talked about the collapse of the bio situation a little bit this off season continue to we have no audience Yep, no audience. Uh, 100 Thieves brought over Abadaga. They won summer. Uh, Worlds was okay for NA. You know, like, it was kind of par for the course. One team gets out and then loses in quarters. I'd say that's, like, a decent year for NA, sadly yeah. enough. But, like, hey, that's that's the reality. That's what a decent year for us looks. No one gets out. It's a bad year. One team gets out. is a good year. One team makes semis or two team gets out. is a great year. Maybe you uh, think a... Uh... A specific player had like a breakout year. Like you're like, wow, yeah, like this Danny, like... some some NA talent popped yeah. off this year, or the year of Fudge. You know, he started like maybe the this year was all about his story. He started locking, and everybody thought he was terrible. And by the end of it, I think a lot of people thought he was the best top laner in the league. Or uh, Jazooker, the Bazooker, in his yes. his yes, I don't know. Uh, co streams. Uh... uh, import rule. Remember the import rule scandal. Uh, that you started? That I started? Well, to be fair, I don't think I started. I think it was when the teams wanted to change it. I would, I would say the team owners wanted to... I think I covered it, uh, is perhaps the way I would describe it. You milked it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now everybody will say I milked it because obviously Riot didn't change it or do anything with it. But I think uh, the community sentiment at the time was uh, pretty strong in, in helping Riot have a pretty good reason not to. Uh, um, for just as a quick reminder for people still posting takes about next year we're not covering next year that's the next episode i don't care any thoughts that you have about anything forward facing oh arcane so, maybe Ooh, you have, arcane yeah. yeah arcane was huge um that i think that that was really big uh you could talk about worlds getting canceled and what that meant or not canceled but like Ch china worlds getting canceled um I'm looking back through my YouTube channel and just seeing like the the big things that we we covered. Remember when newbie came over? Yeah, that was Pog Champ. Oh, uh, the multiple LCS teams um, contracted COVID. I think at the start of the year. Or <laughs> is that a big thing? Yeah, I mean, I just I I'm trying. I'm again. I'm like I forget some of this stuff happened, but I remember like Dig and some other teams had like COVID outbreaks, which was really interesting. Yeah, all those people playing volleyball. Uh, perks. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't think I don't think it ever leaked, but there no, you go. There's no, the leak. No. It didn't, and I was scared because you know Kobe went and played volleyball with that group. Yeah, I did. I he did got he got. Kobe I didn't know tested. if you were gonna say that. I wasn't gonna say it. I mean, he. I mean, it was it was. I think it was he he'd been vaccinated or something. I forget what it was, and so it was fine. But uh, I forget the timeline. But I that was that was spooky. But he immediately got tested because he had to go into the studio, and so. I, I've I've continued to dodge COVID, but I'm crossing my fingers because obviously things have been uh, flaring up again. Uh, this was the year Bjergsen didn't play and coached instead. I thought mm. that was like a big thing. Um, uh, what else? I'm, oh, well, there was the perks, the Twitter perks. 
the Twitter perks? Yes. Remember the the other perks. Oh yeah, I forgot about her. Yes. I haven't seen her in a minute. She's still alive. Yeah, she showed up. <laughs> what the hell? She showed up in uh my Twitch chat the other day and was it was being very supportive and nice. Uh, you know what else there was? There was the McDonald's meme. There was Vulcan working at McDonald's according yes. to, to Reggie. Well, that was the import thing, but yes. I mean, but, that was a very specific part yes. of the whole import situation. Yes. Yes. Yeah, followed by imports, 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 imports. Hello, Keiduo and Shenyi. <laughs> what? Um, oh, they just keep keeping on the imports. Okay, gotcha. Um. Anyway, oh, there was the uh, there. <laughs> This was, here's one thing I will say. This was the most tumultuous year I have ever had with, uh, with Riot, uh, from the media side, which was really funny. Cause, it, um, it was the first year that I worked with, uh, Sherman <laughs> on the, on the comm side, uh, oh. who, who's, who's a fan of the show, friend of the show. He shows up in chat. Who's a total stuff, dictator. That's what you're going to say. Well, it was it was the year where like do, do you remember the big you know the pre-screen question stuff and they they moved Fridays to no post-game press conf or all all press conferences oh, essentially all that stuff yeah 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 so like for me I will say like I'm feeling much better now but there was like that period of time in the summer where I was just like wow this is the worst my relationship with Riot has ever been um, just because of a lot of the comms decisions they made now obviously things have gotten a lot better but. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of big stories happened this year, and it's funny how quickly you forget about them. Yeah, and uh, it's a struggle right now to get topics. So if anyone wants to, this is a great time to talk about anything we just fucking said. <laughs> Instead of telling me that you think TSM's gonna be great next year, Mark, <laughs> Mark and I, Mark and I did the hot tub stream. Oh yeah, that was a whole thing. The hot tub meta. Yeah, yeah, the hot tub meta uh, for for quite some time. Um, and you can, and by the way, it can be it can be things that, that it doesn't necessarily have to be like remember when this happened. It can be takeaways. Like you can say, um, like this is the this was the last year that TSM is ever going to try to do like a big like the sword art thing killed TSM this year. That could be a take you have or something like that. Like think think along those lines. You know, especially. I think now is a good time or is a good time to have these conversations because you look at, you can look at the full year and you can say like, what were expectations at the start of the year? I know Mark mentioned at the beginning, it's like Perks, Alfari, Sword Art. None of them are here at the end of it. So like, what does that mean? You know, what were the lessons from this year? So um, I think, I think it was a definitely an interesting, interesting time uh, in, in 2021. In some ways, 2020 was interesting, but this year there's just like a lot of stuff that went down. So, uh, Thank you. While Mark is, is still finding... Uh, uh, I, I can start pulling people, but but the takes are slow tonight. So anyone who has any thoughts about the previous year... Hit, is, hit is, up the Discord. Hit, uh, up, hit up Dick Sword. Yeah. By the way, one thing to talk about is how this year's format basically failed. Like, Riot tried this, like, 15-game-a-week type thing, uh, and now they're going back to two days for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, Pepper, PhD... Thank you for the sub. Kanoke, Zerthon, Amory Hin, uh, Ian J Seven J Two, Shavul, Pora on Mars for three years. Thank you. Thank you for the prime. Retro Paint, Sky G, gifted the sub. Rise eighty one for three years as well. People hitting the three year mark. LCS EV, Filth Monk, uh, Rice, gifted five subs. Thank you. D Fitch, uh, Ollie One, and yeah, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Um, all right. All right. Yeah, we have, we have someone, by the way. Oh, we have somebody. Hello. It's uh, Lil Bonaparte. Welcome to the show. What do you want? Or where are you calling from? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Have you called? You've called in before, right? Nope. First time. Okay. I think I've seen your, your sub. Um, either way, what do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, Double if was right. And the fact that uh, TSM did him dirty. And they would have done much better this year if they would have just started double lift in the ADC slot instead of lost. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of a 2021 story. It so. started the end of the, it started last year and it ended again this year. It yes. was it was like the capper of the year in some ways. The yes, TSM yeah, drama. yeah, yeah. No, I think it's fair. 
Um, okay, and so the idea is uh, based off of the accounts that have, yeah, because like stuff went down last year. Peter retired. We didn't really know all the, the context or whatever. And then all of it came out like within the past month uh, to Mark's point. So this is really, this is really interesting how that happened. Um, so I guess you're saying, well, Bonaparte, why don't you expand on it a little bit? Why, why do you think it, it is the case? Uh, so no offense to Lost, but Double Lift is probably much better ADC than Lost is. I think he would been really excited to work with um, Sword Art uh, and play with him. And I think they would have had a, a much more dominant bot lane. They would have been able to play a lot more through uh, Double Lift. He can, you know, Double Lift can carry, uh, except at Worlds. Sorry, Double Lift. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he's a great, they would have much better success, uh, most definitely domestically. But also, I feel like they did him dirty with how he gets treated. I, I feel like it's a common theme with Reggie. Uh, Reggie. Right. Well, as long as Reggie is like in the day-to-day -day operations, I consider to see uh, T10 is going to keep doing players dirty in multiple different sports. Um, and we'll have another situation like double lift. I mean, they lost Bjergsen. I mean, how do you lose your star player? Um, and I think well, it all a coach goes back at the, time. To the kind of cult, the culture that is being created in there, and they're going to keep doing it over and over and over <clears> again. <throat> um, and we're never going to see the rise of TSM again. Okay. So, so is your argument sort of expanding out just based off of what you said at the end? It's like, uh, like not picking double lift was the beginning of the end of, of TSM dominance or top, top dog in this, I guess. I don't know what you want to say. I think that's a cultural decision they kind of made and that it's the culture they're building. And, uh, you know, we, I work up in the, I work in the startup world and culture is really important. And if your culture starts going down and you make bad choices and it just kind of keeps rolling down like a giant snowball and turns into an avalanche and then you just kind of hit rock bottom and I think TSM getting not even making playoffs the split could possibly be that bad with how everything's kind of rolling and it all started with doing uh, double lift dirty um okay so on the double lift dirty point I think there's parts I can agree with that like he probably would have had a better year than lost all all things considered but I don't know how much how like the back and forth from both sides, you know, Lena was the one I think who said like neither acted that great. It's not the sexiest take, but like if I was the GM, if I was in Parth's shoes, who Parth also came out and, and said a fair amount about this too, like if my player was waffling about like wanting this guy, but then kind of changing their mind because he didn't know he didn't speak English, but you like you probably told him that, you know, or like there's there's stuff like that, like you know, at some point you're kind of like, well, our the gun's up against our head. We need to start making decisions, and you pull the trigger on Lost, and then like you're gonna fuck Lost over and and not let him play after you picked him up and bring Double Lift back. You know, like. Well, I don't think that the based on the timeline from last year, I don't think Lost was locked in. He was. The timeline I saw was that Reggie and Parth had to make a decision because they only had a couple hours. To figure out what they were going to do and so they move forward with lost and that's when double lift was also like fine put me back in and they would have had to have picked between lost and, and double lift and i think their feeling on the waffling that double lift had already showed was that like hey we, we want to move forward with him and said in part even said they talked to their team too it wasn't like they just mandated this decision um at least that was what i saw in parts uh elaboration so I I guess I would need to dive back in on the, the he said she said situation. Um so but I think your your point is valid, Mark, and I think there's a lot of people who can say like, well, he was not in it and like by that point in time the decision had already been made. And you and the thing is there's evidence of what happens when Double Lift is doesn't have his head in it. <laughs> True. You know, like we saw what happened one year ago on Team Liquid when he didn't think spring mattered and he didn't try at all and he just kind of fucked the team over. <laughs> you know, like uh, we've seen that. And so if you're looking at the last year and you're looking at spring from last year, like I think there's some things to consider, even if you do think Doublelift is the best North American player of all time, which I do. But like, you know, if you're building a roster and building a future, that's not, doesn't feel great. However, I'm going to go out and say that I think TSM would be in a much better place if they had, like, I'm not saying that necessarily it would have been the right decision in that moment. Like, I have said in the past that I don't fault Reggie for making the decision, or TSM, sorry, I should say, um, 
for making the decision on like this Ven Mithy stuff, even though it turned out long term it was the wrong decision, presumably. Uh, however, I do think that maybe that was the right decision in that moment. However, like they would have been better off if they had run double lift. He would have been a better player for that team. He would have gelled better with Sword Art. Like they probably would have made it to Worlds instead of where they went. And I don't think that they would necessarily be in the position that they were at. So like I don't I don't I'm not like wow like those guys really fucked up and they should have made the different decision. But I do think that looking at the results that they had this year, I do think they would have had a better situation had he been there. I know a lot of other people are gonna say, nah, double of sucks, like he's drama, blah blah blah. Oh, Parth just raided us. Perfect timing. <laughs> Uh, I'm defending uh, Parth right now. Everyone who's coming from his stream. Parth you... Parth says, I joned here and heard. He shows Wait, up in heard... the chat. You heard my part, right? Double Not Travis's of sucks. part. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the devil of sucks. We listen, love... Parth, I was just defending you. And, Mar and Mark was saying... What? <laughs> that he thought that you made a terrible decision wait, last wait, year have, in running lots instead of We have a double. third party who can confirm. Lina Bo Lil Bonaparte, who was defending Parth and, right, and TSM? All right, Mark was on TSM's side for 50%. He, he was only 50%. Travis was against TSM. But I'm going go to go with this metaphor. Double lift is like Tom Brady. When Tom Brady calls and says he wants to play, you, you pay him the money and he brings you championships. Tom Brady didn't retire twice beforehand and didn't into team in 2020 summer when he should have. Peter never retired spring, twice. Excuse me. He reti like, I don't think he retired ever. Well, I he mean. He did into team in, in, in spring. I will 100% agree with that. But and he retired, he retired temporarily in 20, uh, 2016, 2017. No, he did spring? not. He took a split off. That was never retired. He took retired. a split off. He, yeah, it, whatever. People for Tom some Brady, reason have this Tom weird Brady idea, that, but he always off. said he's Tom like. Tom Brady is a saint. Oh god! I'm a, Isn't I'm Tom Brady a jerk? In comparison, My no, is he's just a little jerk. weird. He kisses his kids on the lips. No, Tom Brady is like considered like way nice. Like when you, yeah. you used to think Peyton Manning was nice, and then you get these clips of Peyton Manning like yelling at his uh, center uh, on the sideline, where Tom Brady's like, "It's okay, buddy. You know, we're gonna work on this in practice. We're gonna go a hundred times till you get it right." People have such a weird, like revisionist history he did not retire to stream he was like i'm taking a split off because i'm tired and then and had played a ton which i think is respectable um it's better i th i wish let's put it this way i wish he had taken spring of last year off if he felt like his head wasn't in the game rather than like inting uh essentially the that split anyway uh, <laughs> so bonaparte i i think uh, you know, I'm not going to parse in the chat, so I'm not going to uh, repeat uh, what what he said. But uh, He said you guys would have made worlds with double lift. I think I, I am more on your side of the camp, Bonaparte, than I am on, on Mark's side. I will say that. I... Um, anyway, it's, a, it's an interesting take. Thank you for calling in. Is there anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Uh, Bonaparte? Bo Bonaparte, you're muted. Oh, he muted himself. Talk. Yeah. Oh, I want to shout out my uh, my best bud, uh, Tuddies. He is a uh, huge TSS, TSM fan, and we always have good rivalry when T Team Liquid plays TSM. Also, uh, my friend Big Stevie, uh, who's now a retired Academy caster. Um, so, you know, we, we just finished grad school together, uh, grad school class this semester. So, uh, shout nice. out to him too, man. And thanks so much for the stream, guys. Yeah. Oh, GameCube. Oh, it's 100%. Game feels great. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. All right. Off to the next caller. Thank you to Ollie One for the 21 months. And I think we're all caught up on the subs. Uh, Mark is grabbing the next caller right now. But I just want to say, by the way, happy holidays to everybody. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, I, I, I might stream a little bit over the next week or so, just casually. So maybe you can. All right. In. Before we continue, yes. people saying X players to Tom Brady of league. This person's a Tom Brady of league. Yeah, Faker's the best comparison, but honestly, nah. Tom Brady won three and four years playing one way. 
then started winning more where he was the guy gunning the ball down the field when they changed all the fucking passing rules so that you couldn't blow people up over the middle of the field. And he went from being a you know, control-oriented quarterback to slinging 50 touchdowns in a season. All right, he changed his entire play style up. He's the winningest quarterback ever by like just fucking every metric ever. All right. He's Things a little weird. He, he kisses his kids on the mouth. It's weird. But in terms of gameplay, I actually don't really think he has that many comparisons. Parse says, it's funny how many viewers you just lost during this Tom Brady rant. It is. I'm from New England. Mogul he's a literal, is here. He's Mogul, a living saint. Where are you calling from, Mogul? I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. What are you? Are you in? Are you in the car? No. Okay. Sorry. It sounded like you were you were out. Uh, what do you want to talk about on the show? Um. So my take was that NA over the course of this entire year, but mostly summer, honestly, has actually improved a little bit, and. The bar for what is considered good macro has been raised quite a bit, and the level of competition is has improved both for bottom and top teams, and will only get better from here on out. It's uh, the classic, Travis. Are you ready for? Did any wondered this? <laughs> did, this did, uh... Well, they didn't wondered, but perhaps they got better. Uh, is Mogul, Mogul. Well, overall, like you had, take it from stats wise. In 2020, no NA teams got out. In 2021, <laughs> one NA team got out. Yeah, okay. I just we I just feel like boys. that is you know what? So much you won't be able to completely mock all. Thanks yeah, for the yeah. take. I think. <laughs> okay, uh, but you you do feel like macro has improved? Yes, I, I genuinely do. Like TL got second this year in NA. That is big. Like TL was a team that everyone thought was. Stomping, their macro was great, and 100 themes came out and did better than them. And sure, you can say that was one, you know, that was one best of five. Sure, there's a lot of people who consider TL the best NA team. There, there's a lot of debate there. But overall, the fact is that there are multiple teams who are competing at the same level as a TL that was, came out and showed very, very good macro at the end of the year. Mark, this is a, more of a, of a take for you, I think, so... Um, on the point about macro, I somewhat agree. I feel like, I mean, there were definitely some troll games with like some of the backdoors and stuff that happened over the course of the regular season. Um, I also feel like this wasn't a particularly complicated macro year in a sense with the importance on dragon stacking and how obvious it was how to close out games in a lot of ways. Um, I think it was it was more streamlined than, than some of the previous years. But I think NA's macro wasn't terrible. I'm trying to think back at Worlds. Like, did we get out macroed? Were we, like, doing fine in laning phase? And then people were just like, you know, like, oh, my God, they're just too smart. NA's little brains can't compete, you know? Like, I think there might be an angle of truth to this. I'm trying to – I can't remember all of our losses, but, like, some of the hundred thieves stuff felt it like it was more like decision making and willingness to be aggressive. And I mean, C9 uh, at MSI had very varied games. I guess I would say. Yeah, but that was like you know again. I mean, decision making and macro kind of blend together at some point, you know. But like dying at Scuttle Crab is that macro? <laughs> you know, like. Well, so so here's the thing. Like, I don't, I'm not saying that our macro is good by any means. Like, I don't think we're good. I don't think we're bad, but I don't think we're good. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of trying to we convince myself. I'm trying to convince myself of your side because I think there's an angle to say, like, in the past, there have been games where North America just got picked apart. They looked totally lost in the mid to late game. And, you know, there's just, like, nothing that they, they were able to do. Where, you know, C9 wasn't super clean, but they were in it for most of their games. They got out of their group. TL, uh, you know, they made some mistakes in mid to late game, like, Tactical jumping into a brush and dying in their knockout game, whatever that was, you know, like, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think macro was our biggest problem, I guess, this year. I don't know. But at the same time, I, I feel like using 2020, one of our worst years in recent, you know, uh, world events is, is maybe not the best comparison. Um, what about outside of our world's performance, Mark? Do you think that, like... The ten teams that were competing against each other exhibited better macro than in a while. Because I mean, I think there's an argument here that like we had five good teams this year in a way that we haven't in the past. Where like normally there's like 
one or two, you know, like when it, when it does come to worlds, we're sending like two teams and then like kind of a rando third that just made it in somehow or something like, well, I think this was also the year where like there's the most different differentiation. It felt like in how rosters were built, you know? And so in that sense, it's like, well, golden guardians for half the year with their macro wasn't super impressive. I don't think CLG like leveled up North America, but I also feel like a lot of those teams weren't even trying to like compete for the title they were trying to develop or something. And so, I mean, CLG notwithstanding, but like maybe more of the fly quests and, and stuff like that and, and immortals and whatnot. So I don't know, uh, Mog Hall, I'm not sure. I think NA leveled up in some respects. I don't know if Mac would be the one I'd go for. I feel like they had more thoughtful team building last year and a little bit this year than, than we have seen in the past. Mm. Well, but I also don't think Macro was bad last year. I don't think, you know, you know, there's a period of time where we were memed for the, the NA Ram, you know, but I, I feel like everyone a rammed last year. They joined us. We didn't have yeah. to learn to side lane. No one split pushed. I, I can't remember a single game where it was like, oh God, the split push pressure. How do we respond? <laughs> Did anyone <laughs> split push any games at all last year? Maybe we're, some Jax games. Regardless, uh, I mean, it sounds like there's some truth to it, though perhaps like not enough to make this be a very exciting statement. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's like yeah. it's like we were better than before, but it's like is it is it significant? I guess is is perhaps the takeaway. Um, but perhaps it's a good trend line. Maybe we're moving in the right direction. Uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. Mo Mogul, thank you so much for the call. Uh, is there anything you want to shout out before we take a quick break? Um, honestly, shout out to Alienware and Game Fuel as usual, and shout out to Travis and Mark for being great as usual as well. Very good. Thank you so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. Bye, boys. See ya. All right, we're gonna take a quick break to talk about Alienware. Speaking of Alienware, uh, look, you might be getting some uh you know some holiday cash soon or uh maybe a bonus or something like that you might be like hey i want to maybe a, you need a tax write-off before the end of the year if you're doing some sort of small business type thing i just want to mention you know what i'm going to say alienware.com travis go check out their stuff they've got some deals going on uh you can actually go to my page and then once you click through on the banner at the top you can look at deals and there's a section called alienware deals and you can see what they've got going on uh there's some really cool cool stuff that they've they've got i'm i am very soon going to have uh it's 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 taken just a, a little bit i think because everything takes a little bit these days but i'm very excited to be getting my aurora r13 soon uh very excited to to showcase that to try that out hopefully it comes up uh during the break and i have some time to set it up and maybe do some gaming on it during the break and you can get yours Right now, in fact, they have some uh, that I'm looking at right now on the site for my area, at least. Express delivery will get you it uh, January 11th, uh, so not too far away. You can start the new year with an amazing computer. Uh, you go go check that out. We also have a code in the description uh, if you would like to give it a try. It doesn't work on all the systems. Sometimes there's like a deal going on or whatever, but that's a great way to save as well. So thank you so much to Alienware for supporting us throughout 2021. Uh, really, really. Really appreciate their support. Um, it's uh, I think I think there's been look. I, uh, it's the second year in a row I'm not traveling to events. It's the second year in a row that I'm not able to host stuff for them at TwitchCon or E3 or whatever. I really appreciate that they did not come in and say like, well, Travis, hey, you know, they're just great supporters of of what we do here. So I want to thank Alienware so much. And if you can. Uh, help me thank them by clicking on that link or heading over to alienware.com slash Travis and just checking stuff out. Uh, that would be swell. Mark is doing something. Uh, huh? What's going on? You were I heard you talking. My cat pulled my chopsticks off, off the table. I had to go get my chopsticks. We have a caller. Thank you, uh, Basil, for calling in. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Atascadero, California. Tuscany. Where is that? Northern, Southern? Uh, it's Central. It's by Slow, uh, oh, San gotcha. Luis. Yes, Abispo. Yep. Uh, what do you want to talk about in the show? 
Uh, I called in to just say that CLG kind of unfairly ruined Brox's career this year. Oh God, that was that was the big takeaway was uh, for this year is, is for you is just like CLG killed Brox's career. Uh, why don't you elaborate? Yeah. Go for it. Well, I think you take someone who was a world's finalist who on Fnatic was incredibly dominant. And when he did go to TL, sure, the uh, first split was a bit rough. But as you guys previously said, double lift ended a little bit there. And he still performed really well. The team ended up winning summer with him. And uh, they were probably the best, best performing team from North America at Worlds the year he went. They very, very nearly got out of groups. And then the second he went to CLG, the entire team just looked like a mess from a personality standpoint it didn't look like there was any standout player which broxa isn't really a standout player but he is a very good enabler he is a very good like person to just kind of have on your team he's performed incredibly well over the years and to just kind of see management according to basically all of the players screw everyone over the team bombing as hard as it did I find it hard to kind of fault him, especially when the one week that they actually went 3-0, it was kind of off his back in playmaking that they were able to accomplish that. Mark, how much of Brox's current situation, which does not seem as though it involves competing next year, is because of CLG, you think? All of it. No, I don't know. Um, I mean, he was clearly trending down a little bit. You talk about the world finalists uh, year, but then the next year wasn't quite as hot, and the TL year had some ups and downs. He was pretty criticized by multiple uh, analysts within the community. Um, you know, like he wasn't terrible, but wasn't super impactful in some games. And then the CLG thing just uh, made everyone look god awful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like a portion of it, and I mean, part of this this call I was also going to do as just like a retrospective on C9 That's, 20 or CLG, C, you mean? C I was literally thinking the same thing when he started talking about this. I was like, okay, well, we could talk we about Brock as a whole. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was, I, well, I will, I, I think what I will agree with the caller on is if Brock had played for probably any other team in the LCS, I think there's a much greater chance that he's back uh, or still around next year in the LCS, either for that team, you know, like if he ended up on Immortals or. I don't know, Dignitas or something like that. Like, there, I think maybe he wouldn't have been put in the best position to succeed, but it feels like all of those players on the on on CLG were in terrible positions. Uh, so I, I think, I like, it, it was like the worst combination, right? It was like Broxa, who clearly wasn't performing at the heights that he was at on basically the worst team. On the CLG side, as Mark mentions, I, I want to ask you, Mark, do you think this is the worst year in CLG history? Ooh. You know, in some ways, I think so. Because there's been, like, more dramatic seasons in some regards, and this was just kind of painful. Um, and like, there this wasn't is really the year face... CLG died, I think. And, and like, now it's going to have to go through, like, a rebirth next year because, like, they've... Again, for the people that haven't been paying attention, they it's come basically a brand new org next year. Like they like Yeah, well that's what I was gonna say is at least like before you kinda had some through lines to follow, like, oh, this is still like Hotshot's team, or you know, like here's some members that we can kind of follow from like the olden days and like uh, you know, there's Afro for a little bit and then he was gone and then like you know, just like none of these players were really like Pillbelter came back, I guess, but you know, wasn't really i mean this uh, is the year that people basically started wanting clg to be removed from the organization and i know that there was like or from lcs there was some yeah. kind of like fringe conversation around that previously but this is the year that people are like just get them out of here um yeah and, and their own player they're like the clg subreddit has always been a little bit of a funny place to go at different points in their <laughs> careers yes. just see all the doomers but like this was the point in time where they were like just kill us just take everyone out of the org and like build it over you know like it was definitely uh the worst i'd, I'd seen the, their their own fan base as well as the general lcs's perception of them so it might have been yeah 
the, the and there was just no ace. hope. Yeah. It, it was it was five veteran players, more or less, you know, like with Finn being arguably the least experienced. And they reset the whole roster. Yeah. They like the executive that was leading it got I don't know, transferred. I think he's probably still there, but like he's no longer running CLG. Like the team management, coaching staff, all the players, everything is completely gone. So in that sense, like everything was a giant failure. Um and so I do think you know, we'll spend time obviously talking um, and have spent time talking about C9 and the general league and all that stuff. But I do think one of the stories of this was just like, this was the complete breakdown and utter failure of CLG as an organization in every sense. Like, I cannot think of anything that they did this year that went well. Um, and so, yeah, in a lot of ways, I think you could say 2021 was just like, the worst year for CLG in their history and and the year where they basically died. And now we have to see if uh, they can reset. Uh, shout out, by the way, we, we have an interview. Emily is going to conduct an interview for um, uh, Rift Reaction with the new executive running CLG, Greg Kim. So you can stay tuned for that on Spotify if you guys want to catch that. I don't know if it'll be coming out this week or, or next week, but uh, I'm sure she'll be able to ask him some questions about what he's planning on doing. Uh, Basil, I'm sorry that we kind of hijacked your topic and made it a little bit broader, but I think it was a good one. I'm glad you called in to talk about CLG. There's already somebody who in some episode will will have some CLG takes. So I'm glad you brought them up. No problem. This was actually my second time doing so. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you'll just always be our person then. Uh, well, uh, maybe, maybe you can call in on our next episode and talk about what you think 2022 will mean for CLG. Is there anything that you was to... actually my original take? Yeah. <laughs> Is there? Oh, go ahead, Mark. I was gonna say we should get Greg Kim on when he does, and yeah, then maybe. Uh, you maybe. can tell us about how they're the smartest back office again. Oh boy! boy. Can you okay. can you tell him he was wrong about EG? Can you really tell him he was he was wrong? They did okay. Uh, well, he said it I think in 2020, and I don't think that they did particularly well in 2020. I mean, you can't measure someone over a single year. Look at their two year growth. Basil, anything you want to shout out uh, before we go on to our next caller? Uh, yes, of course. I would love to shout out Game Fuel, wonderful best energy drink on the market. Perfect for gaming. Shout out Alienware, the best gaming hardware imaginable. And shout out to the Meat Canyon Tom Brady YouTube video. It's fantastic if you guys haven't seen it. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Okay. Uh, on next caller. caller? Yes. Well, why did I? Why did you echo? Did you unmute yourself on Skype accidentally? Uh, yeah, oh, I definitely I, hear I you was. twice right now. Yeah. How did that happen? I don't, I don't know. know. That was fun though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Next caller. I am Elvis. For thank you for the forty-two months. Pretty crazy. Uh, King of Amashu gifted a sub to Tom Brady. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Blaine for a whole year, and uh, Flick Nickham for twenty months. Uh, okay, the dream is here. Dream, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Pomona, California. Pomona, California, nearby. Uh, what do you want to talk about on this episode? What's your 2021 take? Oh, my 2021 take is not actually mine. It's Tway's. Tweez. <laughs> Wait, what? Sorry, one more time. <laughs> um, Tweez because he couldn't come on because he's driving or something. I don't know. Gotcha. Okay. But his take was that the. Uh, to, uh, 2021 that the LCS has proven that it could survive a total shutdown and that uh, investors should be glad and be more likely to invest more. When you say a total shutdown, can you elaborate a bit? I think... Oh. Go ahead, sorry. It's, it's, it's not because it's, the take is mostly um, coming from 2020 into 2021 yeah. and that compared to every other sport, it, it really survived and thrived throughout the pandemic. Okay. I'm excited for this because I actually kind of have a an opposite opposite take on it. Mark, should I go first? Well, t I think you should go first because as you heard the caller say, this was someone else's take who couldn't actually come on. And then yeah. I was like, anyone want this take? Because I'll pull you for it. And so the dream stepped up, but it's okay. not originally his take. So I don't know how many of the points he can really argue against sure. you for. So well, I, might, Twiz, I might take Twiz is in the chat here. and says I'm at work. So maybe they'll type something out or something. Okay. Uh, so 
I think that that narrative was the narrative for 2020. On the other hand, I think 2021, I do not blame Riot for this. Uh, and I am not like, wow, they should have like packed arenas or something. But I will say that 2020, in my opinion, was the year last year was the year where like Riot survived and when other sports were struggling. Uh, this was the year where they just had like a terrible fucking year. I mean, they still put it on, but like when other sports were able to come back, they weren't able to when they had to pivot the entire world's event from China to Iceland last minute, which I'm sure impacted the quality of the show and the broadcast. Um, there was no audience or any fans for anything. Uh, and like, this was in a year where like other sports were able to come back and were running stuff. I mean, like, it's very ironic in my mind that I, a couple of weeks ago, was at a Warriors game with a full arena, and that was where they were announcing Worlds coming to L.A. next, or not L.A., uh, to uh, the U.S. and North America next year. Uh, and, and it was the first time, I think, this whole year that I had been in any kind of event that had, like, a, an audience or a crowd. Um, and so... I, I actually think, uh, and again, like, I'm not here saying, like, wow, they should have filled uh, the New Jersey arena whenever Delta was starting to pop up. Like, Riot made the decisions that they thought were best, and um, they are in a unique position, unlike other, other traditional sports where, like, they are not necessarily reliant on tickets. In fact, holding events not in arenas probably saves them money. But I, I, I think this was the year where I... I there was a lot of frustration, I think, from fans who looked around, especially in Europe, I think, around Worlds, and were like, wow, like every other sport that I am watching has a, has been able to figure this out, and Riot is still doing this from a studio. So, um, I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with, with the I take. actually have a counterpoint to that. Sure. Nice. I say this year was more of a, like, a setup year compared to to everything because we went from having most of the veterans leaving and coming out renewed and nobody knew what to expect this year but to, coming towards the beginning the beginning was like nobody was really motivated to watch the league it was low views and whatnot then coming into like summer towards the end people were more excited say we got five amazing great teams we got this and we got that and you know worlds has the letdowns and whatnot but coming like this year was really a setting up for really 2022 more. Or, I think this or, summer had the worst viewership of any split in a couple, at least a couple years. Even like even towards the end, I don't think it was great. I mean, this is starting to get a little away from the the. COVID it, it's definitely point, going because, away from the original. Because I would yeah. argue the format was a huge problem, where you know literally you're carrying over records, and it's like great, this team starts in seventh place. At seven and fourteen, who's ready to watch nine more weeks of them? You know, yeah. like I think all those decisions were quite terrible um, in terms of viewer engagement. Summer always performs worse than spring. Um, is always a drop off, but I felt like that really drove it down. And to the caller's point, you know, heading into the end of summer and, and playoffs, I did feel a little bit more of that hype return. Um, but you know, normally you have like a week five through seven kind of doldrums, but I felt like we were in the doldrums in week three already. Um, in summer. Yeah, summer, yeah. Now, I, I think uh, this year, I'm trying. I it's it's interesting, especially because I was just thinking about 2020. I'm trying to think if I thought 2021 was a better year for LCS than 2020, and I frequently think about when I think about the last two years. I think the lowest point for the LCS was the beginning of summer of last year when I did that video and like Mark was on a fucking. His face on the analyst desk was on those like weird sort of like yeah. bigs. They were in the yeah. dome. I wasn't, wasn't going to was really say bad. it, but like but yeah, the that that the production was the broadcast was at a very low point, um, and in the first couple of weeks of summer 2020, and so I think coming back into the studio, uh, being able to do like the live event as weird as and awkward as it was at, for spring finals, no audience obviously, but like at a location. There was a lot of this year that was better than last year. However, I think in a lot of ways, this was one of the worst years for the LCS in a while. Um, maybe the broadcast got into a better place, but I still don't think it was in a very good place. The format was 
not good. They pivot. They completely pivoted out of it uh, to next year. Uh, I think co-streaming has been a ongoing topic of discussion throughout this year, um, and there's really strong opinions on both sides. The import rule stuff that occurred, I think there was a lot of faith in all, some of the teams and in the the league around that time, like uh, loss of faith, I should say. Like I, I think this was a really tough year for the league, um, and I'm, I am, I have faith actually for the first time in a while that like things will be better next year because I personally believe that like this probably shook the league a lot and they realized that they've got to really ramp it up for next year, um, but getting back in the arena, I think was really helpful. A lot of the other things, I think, were not. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, a boring take that everything something's got better and something's got worse it's an honest take mark i'm bored <laughs> hey uh thank you to the dream for the call and for representing somebody else's take uh it's nice yeah. of you to, to be able to do that uh is there anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller shout out game feel amazing any flavor can't go wrong while getting the game feel you should get one while looking up uh, alienware computer even better <laughs> love to hear it thank you so much for the call and we'll catch you next time bye-bye uh what there's been a couple times it's been murmured around chat uh in whispered voices but uh 2021 was also the year that kobe still did not get a cat uh, and it's been a bit of a disaster for that reason yeah don't uh, that, that that was not a good time to to there's been a lot of cat tension recently uh let's put it that big way. big come down from 2021 my cats are playing right now Yes. chasing each other around is this after they fucked up your keyboard or the, your chopsticks or any of the other things that they've been terrorizing you with lately uh the chopsticks was cute the keyboard was not yes mark had to come borrow a, a keyboard from me recently because his cats apparently peeled the keys off of his his board i got and... something to tell you about but i, I shouldn't say it yeah, yeah we'll talk about it later um okay you want to grab the next caller yeah it's Kyler is uh, resubbed. Thank you for the 37 months. Really appreciate it. Twitch chat needs to calm down. Um, da, 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 da. Kyler says, I'm waiting for 40 months to finally call into the show. Well, hopefully you get on that week if you've waited that long. Uh, can you get a new keyboard on Alienware? Sounds like a business opportunity. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, da, da, da. Mark is almost here. And he's back with Mendoc. Mendoc, where are you calling from? I am calling from Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, my take was that uh, this year uh, it, we had the most zero to heroes of the uh, LCS. And it had to do a lot with the old guard leaving the league. I, so I like this. This is a positive take. Uh, we've had some a lot of criticism in the last couple of calls. Not that it's terrible, but yeah, go ahead and uh, explain. So uh, I did a little uh, research, just like five minute research. Uh, and just names to throw out is like Fudge, Danny and Palafox did a really good job coming from nothing to being a recognized name. And the years prior to that, it was only really like Tactical and Broken Blade that really popped off in the scene. Well, and speaker. Oh, uh, Spica, yeah, too. I mean, there's um, it's not there's usually a couple, right? Yeah, there's usually a couple, but it seemed that um, because of the old guard, you know, leaving and uh, leaving a void of like empty star starship or uh, you know, uh, famous. Um, yeah, there, there's, there, there were to roles be, to yeah. be filled. Yes, yeah, shoes. Yeah, to be roles filled. to be filled. Yeah, void to be filled. Yeah. Um. So, I think this is fair. I do think they're like Danny and Fudge in particular are pretty good stories. You mentioned Palafox. I don't know if Palafox got that much attention. I think he's probably better than what a lot of people think of him uh, just because of sort of the team he found himself on, the situation he found himself on. But uh, I would actually say that Olive was somebody who got a lot of oh, attention. Yeah. That's a good yeah. call out. Yeah. yeah. And, and also had like a similar arc of like, oh, like this guy didn't look great in the beginning. And by the end of it, a lot of people thought he could have potentially been competing for a all pro spot. I don't think he made it, but uh, 
Yeah, so I think that there were several, and I, I think that's a good point. And one of the things I, I appreciate is that a lot of it was, I don't want to say any talent, but like you, you mentioned like Zero to Hero. It's like a lot of these were folks who kind of built themselves in North America uh, over time. And so I think that that is a really positive sign. There's still work to be done. Um, and obviously we're still importing a lot of players, but yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, fudge had looked good in Australia, but it's not like he was a player from Fnatic or G2 that ended up over here and, and like looked better over time. You know, it's like there, there were some success stories on the development front this year. What do you think, Mark? I think it's, it's pretty true. I think, um, most of the players that you have this zero to hero story for as well are ones that are still here. Uh, which I think is a really important part of it where, you know, like we get to track a blaze all of next year and be like, okay, was that like a good summer split or is he actually this good now? Um, same with fudge. He's someone that I think earned a lot of, not just with his in-game play, but his out of game antics, you know, like he was so fun to watch over the year because he talked shit and he wasn't afraid to, to put himself out there. Um, I think all those things helped, uh, like him and it makes his transition to mid lane very interesting. I think there's a lot of those kinds of things for him. Danny as well, um, with Jojo Pian joining him, like more opportunities for for that kind of hero building. So I, I kind of agree. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to compare it to previous years because it is something that's harder to track. What, what, did 2020 have any big zero to heroes that I, I can't remember? Was was that the year that Spika really popped off? I kind of feel like it was. Spika popped off more this year. Um, last year he was he he came in and he was he was good. Um, and at Worlds I gave him a lot of credit, but it wasn't like he was the focal point of that team. Oh, tactical. Twitch chat points out tactical. Tactical yeah, was tactical. last year. Yeah. So I think I think that was that's tactical is probably the best example of that. Oh, um, maybe FBI. Yeah, yeah, FBI popped off last year. I mean, the the Golden Guardians that Golden Guardians team was probably yeah. like a him a, closer a good example, especially. Cootie. But it, yeah, but I don't think. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't as like crazy as. Uh, is what we said. Like Fudge, I think, was such like a headline name throughout this year. Someone um, mentions Johnson, but I would put Johnson and Neo in kind of the same category of being like fine and you kind of respect them, but it wasn't like, wow, look at this guy turning heads. All right, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, by the way, do we have a, a 100T call, Mark? Uh, I don't think yet. Well, I think we can kind of like this is a bit of a, a tangent, but it's in the same vein of like success stories. Like the the core golden guardians players from last year transferring into hunter T and then being the first team to really change things up in and, and win. That uh, wasn't like team liquid C9 or, or T, uh, TSM. I think that, that was like also a really cool story from this year. And obviously, I don't know. I, I don't think they got as much attention at worlds afterwards, but like if, if you follow kind of where they were starting, as like, oh wow, like this core group from Golden Guardians is like transferring in to this, you know, higher competition team at the start of this year, and then they end it at the regular season at least, or the regular what the LCS season, um, by winning summer. I think that's also a really cool story. And it's in it's in the same sort of theme, I think, is what you're getting at with like, hey, we saw these these names like Fudge really show up this year and like become we're really well known within the league, so I like I like this Mendoc. I think it's really good. Um, I think it's something to be excited about. I think next year we're gonna have a lot more. Who do you think? Ne yeah. Well, this is probably for next episode, but uh, well, well, I'm okay with here. I get right out. Like who who are the acquisitions in? We'll cheat it. We'll do say who were the 2021 off season ac acquisitions that you're excited about for next year? Boo. Oh, um, you, you take tenacity. Tenacity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't really think of anything besides him right now. A lot of people I are think... excited about JoJo. Um, so yeah, we'll see JoJo. How JoJo, goes. JoJo but... Some of the CLG guys you could be excited for, like Luger or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Mark. One thing I was going to say is I think it opened the door for a lot of these guys. Um, the fact that some teams took risks in 2020 and they paid off with a lot of those examples you're giving that I think it, it made... And and seeing some some of the imports flop, which I think is another topic yes. that we have, we have that topic coming. Okay. So I think those two factors combined made this year a lot easier for teams like CLG to be like, "Fuck it, we're going young. 
it's yes. cheaper and like it, it can work and there can be some people that you find um and like there, there's a lot of teams this year that were built tsm c9 clg um with these kinds of aspects in mind yeah as that's something i was going to say uh that teams have been getting a lot better at um taking new rookies and or on names and making them uh more popular and uh hyped yeah because if they're losing their star players they gotta you know figure out something uh to grab traction towards them or their uh, organization i just hope that they can like right now we're kind of in this weird situation i think where there is like momentum around some of these players i don't know if there's hype yet you know what i mean like uh, one of the the interesting things that we were looking at, um, some friends and I, uh, Mark Mark might have been there, was sort of like who, how are how's the social followings of some of these new players growing? And like Fudge, for instance, on Twitter, sitting at forty three k. I think he deserves a lot more. Uh, Spica is at fifty five. That dude spends a ton of time ratioing people on Twitter. Um, so I think that there's a lot of hope that uh, we will. I I am hoping that next year we will see these players continue to succeed because I think in the past we've seen drop-offs, right? Like tactical, for instance, this year, I don't think carried the momentum he had. And then that the broadcast and the teams and content creators like myself and Mark um, can really also help build these players out and like, Hey, remember this guy that looked really good last year? Like here's why you should root for him this year. Or this is why this is like their cool story or whatever, really start to build fandom around these players. So um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited, uh, Mendoc, and I think your, your call is great. I'm really glad that you brought it up. Uh, is there anything you want to shout out before we, uh, go on to, well, actually before we take a quick break? Uh, Game Fuel and, uh, Alienware. And thank you guys for being such an amazing content creators. Oh, thank you so much. It's nice to hear that. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Happy holiday. Oh, I didn't mean to cut him off. Sorry, Mendoc. A happy he holiday. He got happy too, holiday too. out at least. He did. He did. Um, all right. Well, we're going to take a quick break on that note to talk about Game Feel. I am enjoying a delicious charged orange storm Game Feel right now. And I would just oh, say... That one's, that one's my my cat's favorite, too. He's a charged orange storm. Just to be clear, we don't condone uh, providing Game Feel to your animals. Um, but anyway, uh, if you are... Look, it's during, during the holidays, you know, here's this is the time of year... We're not everybody. I know some of, some folks have to work, and uh, I want to be sensitive to that. But for those of you who do get the opportunity to unwind, maybe from school, you're you're on break, or maybe you know your work has the week off or something, or maybe you're taking a couple days off even, and you want to play some games, you want to play some TFT, some League, some Genshin Impact. I don't know if you guys have heard of that game before. Uh, you know what's a great great thing to go with that. As you're, as you're letting your sleep schedule go wild and enjoying the late nights, get some Game Feel over at gamefield.com slash Travis. Uh, and you use code Travis when you check out because that's very helpful. Uh, and now's a great time to do that because we get to talk to Game Feel about 2022. Uh, and as I'm, res I'm reflecting on 2021, I really loved having Game Feel as a partner for the show. I, it I seems agree. Like a lot of you guys did, yes. I love getting Game Feel and having one in my fridge whenever I need to pick me up. Yes. So everyone immediately right now, go tweet at GameFuel <laughs> or make a Twitter and then do it. Or go to GameFuel.com slash Travis and purchase a case with code Travis. Um, it, it's a great holiday gift. Let me tell you, <laughs> I, I gave it to all my family. They were fucking stoked to get GameFuel. Well, you give you give holiday gifts early, Mark. Yeah, well, that's because they need it to get all their shopping done. They need to get fueled up. That's true. That's true. You're like, you need this game feel so you can go give me gifts. That's your holiday yeah. strategy. I like that. Uh, yeah, no, I really, I look, we love to have a game feel uh, over the course of this year. Love to continue to have them uh, next year. And so uh, if you guys appreciate their support of the show, feel free to let them know either on, on social media or uh, just by going and purchasing a case and giving it a try. Uh, there's variety packs, by the way, over there on the Gamefield site. So if you don't know like which flavor you want to try, um, and you want to try one for the first time, you know, pick up a pick up a variety pack. Use some of your your holiday stocking stuff or cash to uh, to try some Gamefield. It's a suggestion. I'd appreciate it. Anyway, thank you so much to Gamefield for sponsoring the show. And Mark is yes ready to go grab our next caller. I think. 
Are you? I think. Yes, he is. Okay. Mark wearing flannel pajamas right now, I think. He's 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 ready to take his break. Unwritten Tales gifted a sub to Mia Khalifa. I think she will really appreciate that. I'm sure she's a huge fan of the show and enjoys watching Hotline League uh, in the like 12 hours before it hits YouTube via the VOD. Poggy Woggies, thank you for the Prime. And Naked Homeless Man, thank you for the 47 months. Almost four years. Uh, that is wild. Uh, last sub of the year. Yes, thank you. Maybe we'll start next year with the, the four-year mark. Old Cosmic Drive, where are you calling from? Uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, very cool. What do, you, uh, what do you want to talk about on the show? So my take was that uh, uh, MS, like MSI only including like the top um, team from each like major region and then a few wild cards is it's never going to make uh, Spring Split exciting. Um, or I mean, it's never going to make Spring Split have like even close to the same value for teams uh, as summer. Um, so, so sorry. you were disappointed in the MSI format this year? Uh, maybe a bit, but I, I mean, it's just sort of like first of point that like, even though they tried to like join the points from spring and summer this year, like it still didn't like really work in the end, I think. Gotcha. Okay. So you yeah, think the, I think the, it's the it's format. fair to say yeah, to, ahead, to staple an extra point onto onto hers is that for me the spring not mattering has been a narrative that's been battled time and time again, and and they try to tackle it a, a different way this year, and it still came up a little short. Um, and so reflecting on this year and all the all the previous years, I think there's stuff that I would like to see changed. Um, and a lot of times they tackle it on a domestic level. And I feel like MSI itself has not really been looked at in, in a long time. And maybe this is the year to, to go back and look at it. Uh, no, I think, I think it's good. By the way, caller, sorry, uh, I've turned you up to 200%, but your, your mic's a little quiet. So I don't know if you can get a little closer. Um, but I, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a good, uh, point is like, okay, so Mark and I kind of agree with you that spring is still in a rough place. Maybe rolling stuff over from last year wasn't fantastic. And like MSI maybe doesn't feel as hype. Was there something, is there something you would like to see different? Um, I think that's like not really my topic of expertise, but then it's, it's just like expanding more on like, uh, especially like major regions so that you can see like matchups of like favorite, like, like, I don't know. I think in China, the second largest fan base next to, um, RNG was like EDG, right? And then all of a sudden, like the Chinese fan base only has to get behind RNG. And that's like the only thing they have to cheer for, for MSI. And a lot of people aren't going to be like nearly as interested, you know? Yeah. No, I think it's, I, th I think it's cool. Mark, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna throw in, I think um, domestically for a lot of teams, like some of the things that, for teams that aren't like thinking that they might win right out the gate it does feel a little weird that you don't really have anything you're competing for now that championship points are gone i mean you you are trying to have the best record for summer but again eight teams make it so as long as you're not like terrible you know like you kind of make it in anyways and you're gonna have to beat some good teams and best of fives no matter what um and so like, it just doesn't feel like there's a ton for teams to really aim for in spring other than try to win as many games as you can great everyone always does that and two, like if you win the entirety of spring, one out of 10 teams gets some kind of reward and the rest are like, could put playoffs didn't matter. You know, um, I, I feel like that format, you could try and tweak it domestically and, and bring championship points back or do some of that stuff. But I feel like if you just expanded MSI, which is something that people have always wanted anyways, because there's not that much international competition. Um, I feel like you might be solving two birds with one stone then about giving a tournament that's more satisfying for fans so that's a little bit bigger while also giving domestic leagues more to play for in spring. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a really good point. Um, and I like it, you know, I know that we're kind of focusing more on MSI rather than like what the change was this year, but I mean, they've announced the whole new format for next year, right? Like that's all, that's all out. I think they announced it right in the middle of like everything else happening in the off season stuff. So um, but I, I think it's really, I'm, I'm, it's, it's telling that again, this year f they felt like the format, like the change was not great for spring 
And so now we're kind of going back to before. Um, Did they ever announce what the, what the, I know they announced like days of the, the games and some of the like super week stuff, but did they announce how spring and summer interact? I, I don't know if they did. Caller, do you know? I think they're just separate. Like each, each season has its own points. Yeah. I, uh, I want to make sure cause I've heard some stuff, but I, yeah, that's, that's where I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember what was in the announcement again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's because it came out right in the middle of like literally everything happening. And so if we have, I'm like looking at the website right now to see what the, their formal like format information was LCS 2022 uh, format update. Okay. Well, you read that, uh, I'll, and you can find it. Someone in Twitch chat says the format is the reason why so many rookies got a chance. I disagree. I feel like, I feel like if you're a smart team, you can, you can assess your options in the off season as you're, as you're putting your plan together and realize whether you have a legitimate chance of winning in spring or not, and then decide to promote those rookies regardless. Or, you know, like for teams that were in the fifth through seventh kind of tier of teams, you kind of know if you're going to win or not. Like you want to win, of course, you want to try your hardest. That's a goal, but like. If you're in that tier, you should start giving younger players a shot because there's no reason to sign five veterans that aren't going to win um, or have a chance of competing. So I feel like if you're a smart team, you should be doing this anyways. And it was a failing of teams ever since franchising that they haven't been, been approaching it this way. You know, I think that they they both announced the changes and they didn't in this. Like they didn't really acknowledge that they are changing back to a spring finals. They're calling it spring playoffs. Uh, and they're like, it will, cr yeah. I mean, it, I will, okay, fine, fuck it. I don't, whatever. I will Wait, just say that like, from my understanding, like spring is, I because I don't think that they're trying to hide it in this. I think they are just like not being explicit about it. But yeah, like my understanding is they're going back to kind of the way that it was before. Um, so I don't know, but I, it is, it's very funny because this came out November 16th, which I think was like the day after, um, the offs, all the, the free agency stuff hit. And so I think it kind of slipped under the radar, but yeah, my understanding is that they're not doing, what did they call spring finals this year? Mid mid season showdown. So the fact yeah. that they're willing to call it spring again, indicates that it, they're willing to let it stand on its own. Whereas yes. before when the se when the seasons were, were put together. I mean, there was a lot of internal talk about like, what do we call this now? Yeah. Cause it's, it's not spring finals because spring and summer aren't different things anymore. Yeah. There is no, there's nothing listed here as saying mid season showdown or anything. And, and from my understanding, like we're basically back to, I think where the league was in like 2019 in almost every single way. Uh, oh. I guess, I guess they're doing lock in and uh, they're, they still keep lock in, which means that they do super weeks. Uh, regular season records will no longer carry over from spring to summer split. That's okay. So they're explicit about it here. We believe that reducing the number of regular season games will help combat player burnout while delivering more meaningful matches for our fans. Additionally, the earlier start times will help our East coast and European, uh, fans. So, um, uh, Great. there you go. Yeah. I, I'm glad because I mean, it's kind of lame that like we, we lost a year trying to call it mid season showdown the whole time. I was like. Can't I just call it spring playoffs? Yeah, like, I'm so matter. curious to see what they, what they like, how they handle it. Like, what did is that a, t a title? Because I remember like they were trying to say that they, like, they're going to call it. They, it's considered a title. They got a banner for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was whatever. functionally spring playoffs. They just didn't want to. I don't know. Oh, um, I have a question for Mark. Um, you're a little quiet. Can you speak up just a oh, bit? Is this better? Yeah. 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 So. Since you're on the broadcast, like from your perspective, how much more resources do you think they'd have to put to like expand MSI and like, you know, in the future, like well, it's having the double brackets is having like way more broadcast time for international tournaments. Like, do you think they're actually going to do that? Or is it like, or like, how are the finances behind that? Caller, you so are incredible. This is the first time in 201 episodes where somebody's literally just been like, Mark, Use your fucking broadcast work to like answer my fucking question about this thing. Like I, this is it. I've never seen this before in the history okay, of online well, league. So this is fantastic. Yeah, Mark, how much money is it going to cost if they want to do this? Twenty million dollars. No. So I appreciate put it, getting put in the spot. I wish people would do it for things that are more in my realm of expertise. Because unfortunately, I don't really get any insight. And like the most that I hear is like 
I hear whispers of conversations happening over here in a, in a department that I have nothing to do with. So I don't know exactly how much extra it's going to take, but um, it would be a lot. I think whether they'll do it or not is something that I'm slightly more optimistic about um, in the future, or at least changes to the world's format. It sounded like, I don't know if it was John Needham or someone gave an interview that like, you know, they, they did their usual at the end of the year, like, well, we'll take a look at the format and see yeah. if this is the worlds that people want. But it felt like a little bit more open than, than sometimes in the past. So I hope, um, if I was going to hope for one of the two things, either uh, a worlds, ooh, which would I want? A worlds with the knockouts? Like, if they were going to up the resources, you know, for international tournaments, would I rather have a, a worlds with a lower bracket or a slightly expanded MSI? Ooh, that is a tough call. I mean, the, the reason I'm a little nervous about seeing this stuff in 2022 is because they've already announced basically like all the cities and the stages for those cities uh, for next year for Worlds. I guess they haven't announced they haven't announced MSI yet, right? I don't I don't think I know. Not that I know it. of. Uh, but I f uh, at least on the Worlds front, I'm like less confident that they will be able to make i'm sure they'll make some tweaks to try to like be like look we we made some changes but i i'm less confident that they'll make dramatic changes like a double elimination type stuff or whatever um, and to be fair to them if they have to be locking in venues a year in advance you can't really change the format in a one-year time scale you would need to have a two-year one to yeah. say like well next year we're going to be or two years from now we're going to be doing it this way right so um but i don't know uh, anyway. One thing I'll say, oh, here, here's something that would solve a lot of logistical problems. Stop moving the tournament around. Um, that's one of the things that I know when people look at, like, uh, the international. Like, you know, they get to do a lower bracket. They're in one city and in one venue, for the most part, through the entire thing. Um, and I feel like that could, that could solve the problem. Is like, hey, sorry, NA. You know, we want to give you this world global tour that's super awesome. Man, screw all y'all. Put it put it somewhere and like let us let us uh just just host it there. People can travel. If well, they have a whole month. Yeah. On that note, yeah, they, they are doing it a little bit with uh, New York, where they're like grouping groups and quarterfinals together. Which I will be honest, I wish that they were not putting the vast majority of the tournament in the most expensive city in North America uh, to visit because. <laughs> I've got some budgeting I have to do for next year, um, and I am not looking forward to what those results are going to look like. But uh, I like maybe that there is some flexibility there because, like, if you're only moving, like, plans is whatever. But Ow. if you're you're only moving it for like the semifinals and finals, it might be okay. Oh, toaster trial read my mind in Twitch chat. I was going to say put it in some fucking random podunk town in the middle of nowhere, United States. And just like watch people's eyes bug out of their head as like all these zoomers flood their fucking town to you, watch. Do you it, think a, someplace a like sport. Tallahassee, Florida, Mark? <laughs> Somewhere like that, yeah. Yeah. As long as there's some stadium you can steal for a month, you know. I wonder if, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, all right. Old Cosmic Drive stand is old. Co what is Old Cosmic Drive? Uh, I don't remember. I. I made this username like a while ago when I entered the server. I don't you don't know. remember? Okay, well, that's fine. Um, either way, I, we haven't done this in a while um, just because there's been a little bit of, of slowdown on the shipping stuff, but I'm going to risk it and give you Game Fuel Victory Caller of the Night. Thank you for calling Mark out and asking him directly as a member of the broadcast the exact financial numbers that it would take to double everything at international events. Um, I will... Uh, shoot you a, shoot you a message i guess so that um we can you can i'll give you information on how to get your stuff over to people so you can get some free game feel but thank you for the call anything you want to shout out um i guess i will shout out arcane because i've been putting so many requests in pleb topics to talk about arcane but uh i <laughs> i am a i am a concept artist uh and like i can tell you this from like the industry perspective all my friends colleagues that work in entertainment that like league is so lucky to have arcane be like the um the so where it's just like like the platform that i mean 
that like Fortiche chose to like do this because like I I personally think and a lot of my friends think that like Arcane is like up there with like Spider Verse of like artistic significance, like this like changes the industry for sure, and that like the fact that they chose Leak like the game that like people like shit on on Reddit and like um you have like a really spicy Twitter for it and then just create like this like absolutely watertight art direction like stylization just like there's so much talent put into this that like it's just like holy <laughs> We're it's it's funny out. this would have been your best best uh episode to try and get me to talk about arcane because I, I generally try to avoid spoilers and talking about it during the show but this is the year in review episode but then you had another good take instead so you shot yourself in the foot well regardless Thank you for the call. Congratulations on Victory Caller. Uh, good shout out on the Arcane stuff, and uh, even better shout out on asking Mark, uh, on grilling Mark with that question. Uh, either way, we'll catch you next time. Happy holidays. Oh, and then one more thing: if anyone wants to see more uh, artwork, like the like sort of like the artwork that was in the backgrounds of Arcane, then look at the list of map painters specifically. Like that's that's where you'll look on the credits if you want to see more stuff like Arcane. So. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. All right. You know what? What she was saying was really funny too. Have you have you seen the Gigak review of uh, Arcane? No. You know, who, you know who Gigak is? He's like one of the biggest anime reviewers on YouTube. Uh, has, I might have seen the very, very beginning of it. Um, actually, come to think of it, where he was like, I know. I mean, I'm I'm not. I always you know review anime and this technically is an anime or something i think i watched a little bit of part of, of it one time while playing genshin i mean it's just funny how much he talks about how league is like a laughing stock in the greater gaming community yeah and then how much it's like fuck now i want to play league oh yeah kit kat says anyway. i can I, I wish they would have turned her volume up we put it to 200 percent, and then i was manually adjusting it in xsplit um and, I, and unfortunately mark would get loud too and so I apologize if Mark sounded really loud because I can only shift after I max it out on 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 Discord, two hundred percent on Discord. I you know I can only go so far. Um, Jack, thank you for calling in. Where are you calling from? Uh, thank you. I'm calling in from Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts. Mark's is Tom Brady a walking saint or not? Tom Brady is the man. Tom Brady is the man. I love that conversation earlier. That was fun. <laughs> I've I've just heard he's supposed to be a jerk, but I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, what do you? What's your call? Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the um the import situation this last year. Um, but before I give my take, I just want to say like the import rule overall, I think has been beneficial to NA success internationally. Um, however, I think this year also showed that um, uh, the success that we've had inter internationally um, can't improve unless we fix things more internally. So I don't think imports solve all our problems. And so for the future, I think the region needs to improve by focusing on internal improvement rather than like external extraction. And I think what Alice is doing with C9 is pretty promising for NA kind of gelling the two. I... Yeah. I, uh, can you elaborate a little bit? Like, what are the the main reasons you have that that sort of opinion? Um, well, I mean, there's like success with like Core JJ moving, uh, going to TL. We've seen TL have massive success, but then we see things like Alfari and Parks not really working out, and some like I don't think Broxa has worked out too well in NA historically, and so I think. The um, the issues that NA has is not the mechanics or the talent of the players, but more how, um, and this might be like an LS sounding thing, but how we kind of view the game in NA seems to be more of the issue. And I think um, that, I don't sure. know, yeah. I think uh, the idea that, you know, NA, how they view the game versus hands and all that stuff, I mean, there's, there's different ways you can argue that. But one thing I, I can agree with is the idea that just like dropping hella big bucks on a single player or like, you know, to join your team and, and save your region and elevate it, I think it's shown to not be the the way that it really works. Um, and I think this last year with all three of them dipping out after getting their Skrilla, uh, 
And like, you know, there's other things that go into their general state of happiness. Like Perks wasn't happy here and stuff like that. Like, I don't want to make it seem like they just came and chased the bag and got it and left, but like, didn't help NA, you know, like we're, uh, they didn't do anything to really help the infrastructure. And to your point, I think that's something that teams going forward can do a better job of. And I think they are, I see people in a or in chat talking about how like, oh yeah, LS is fixing NA by bringing in a bunch of imports. But the idea that he's not just overspending for a bunch of names that we already know and looking to bring people over who have not yet hit their ceiling and, and develop and the idea of development, even if it's not specifically North American players, it is still North American development in the region. Um, which I think is, is the point that I can definitely rally behind is like, I'm to I, and I've been pushing this for years. I'm fine with imports. I love imports. I love giving NA players their chance. We just need to give more players their chance and not just bring over someone on a $6 million contract and then be like, well, but we didn't win worlds like that. Yeah, I have mixed feelings on this call because on one hand, uh, where were the five players that won summer from? Okay, yeah. but you're playing. You're playing right into my take. No, no, no. I know, I know. I think, I think there's something kind of in the in the middle here, right? Which is like to to what we were mentioning earlier. You know, Golden Guardians to the like Golden Guardians core to the Hundred Thieves thing is a success story for like development in North America. Um, and like on the other hand, Perks, Alfar, and Sword Art not working out is kind of the lesson there. It's just, it's like, I think part of the challenge is, you know, the team owners who wanted to lift the import rule or were most vocal, I guess I should say about wanting to lift the import rule there, they were like, no, no, we, we need to be able to take the best talent from wherever we need. Like, it's not enough to like, have just like one or like, I think they would argue. Yeah. You know why perks left? Cause like we weren't able to give them four other players from Europe to put on the team, you know, um, because of, of how this stuff works. Uh, whereas I would argue like a hundred T doing what they did is and, and golden guardians before them shows that you, you shouldn't be in the mindset of like, let's just go grab five big name players and plop them on it on a team. Um, so it's like, it's, it's, I think a little bit more gray than this, but I, I do agree that like, Hmm. It's very funny. Oh, yeah. I want to say that Perks, Alfar, and Sword Art taught everybody a lesson, but I don't know if it did. Like, it doesn't look like Steve was like, let me change my philosophy at all. TSM obviously has a very different philosophy after the Sword Art stuff, but like... C9 clearly does too, I'd say. Maybe it's just them recovering their pocketbook, but at least this year they have an identity. They're, they're spending a ton of money uh, and building around one guy that's uh, living in Korea similar situation <laughs> yeah you think his contract was as much as perks dude i have no idea what it is but uh can you imagine like i have to imagine he makes bank doing like the co-streaming and the all the content and stuff that he does like what must it have taken to like i don't know maybe maybe he does actually as much as he shills for primes i don't necessarily know if what i'm sure ellis is excited about the idea of coaching. So maybe it's not like he needs, he's like, you need to meet what I make right now. But, um, I don't know. I do, I do wonder how much money it took to like build that team, especially because yeah. he has all the people around him. I mean, sh sure. But it, it, there's no way it's as much. Well, I mean, whatever. even if, even if he is a big pickup in, in LS, it's not going to rival perks. And then you have a couple other people who are probably cheaper than even Sven and Vulcan were. Um, yeah, with with aisles and berserk, like the whole the whole roster is cheaper. Top yes. to bottom. No, that's that's fair. That's fair. So maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just really, I I do think that there will be less just dramatic spending. Like I guess you could. Okay, here's one way of thinking about it. Team Liquid, their biggest spend was on getting a guy who's been competing in North America since 2013 to join their team. So maybe it, there was a lesson there for all three of those teams. Um. Or maybe I they mean, just were like, well, fuck, they're not going to lift the import rule for us. So I guess we have to do something different. Yeah, but even like, like even CLG brought brought Finn over, right? They're just like, oh, a role player on the European team that made Worlds? He'll be great in North America. <laughs> even though he was just a role player on that lineup, you know? Yeah. Like, 
I don't see anyone. I mean, you can you can argue about Blue and Takui and Price Sark and some of them, but at least they're like arguably still developing more so. Um, but like, yeah, they're I, closer I to a closer, I guess. Those, those right? Players. They're yeah, they're closer to a closer. Um, and so like for me, I'm fine with with like. I mean, you can debate the specifics of each player, but that idea is is fine with me. And I think less teams like, dude, literally since the fir the first import ever was Edward, Curse did it, Steve. Big surprise is still the one doing it. You know, <laughs> still the one trying to sign big name people. Ever since then, bring over a single superstar to like help a team has not really worked. Um, uh, Edward, Piglet, uh, you know, there's just like countless examples uh, over the years of, of like these superstars that you bring over uh, after something's gone wrong in their career in the region they want to play in. And then it's like they're they're not terrible. Like Piglet was really fucking good and helped us win a lot of games. But you know, like I, I think the the better approach is what you saw at TSM take with Bjergsen way back in the day, where it was someone on the come up who was really hungry, and you know got got him in early. Um, I, I'm I'm always a little bit more uh, for that approach. So, um, yeah, I, that, that's my take, and I think a lot of teams are, are are leaning that way more now this year than just signing big name guy from other region that's fair i uh i know i i think it's it's interesting to consider I, I this year in a lot of ways was a year about imported players both in the desire to lift the import rule in 100 t like winning with a full quote-unquote import roster i know that technically the Auss aussies don't count or um oceania and then also with like the three biggest imports leaving after a year. And so it, it was a big year of conversation around this stuff. Um, perhaps the biggest maybe in the entire history of the LCS. So I, I think if that's sort of the takeaway from all this stuff, it's a, it's a fair one for 2021. Jack, anything you want to shout out before uh, we take a quick break? Uh, I just want to shout out you guys. Thank you for the entertainment last year. And I love this podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll Thank catch you, you uh, in the new year. Thank you. You, got, right. you got one more one more ad read for us? We, yes, yes. But this is a very unique ad read, um, and it's a bit of a we're breaking some some walls here. Uh, so, f a lot of you may know that Mark and I have been creating a lot of Genshin content lately, and what's really cool is we have a sponsor uh, for this episode, which is we, I think I, I've shouted out Prime Gaming. You guys know that they give out stuff in League of Legends. But if you are interested in trying Genshin Impact or you play Genshin Impact, this is uh, something else that is really cool that they do, um, which is, let me see if I can uh, have, where did where did this go? Ah, here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on screen right now so you guys can see this. But if you, one, if you, if you look in the description of the video on YouTube, you'll see a link and if you're watching live, you'll see the link in chat. Um, and this is basically what you do. Here's a little video that I'm playing right now. You can hit, this is me earlier, hitting claim now. You get this code, which will unlock stuff in Genshin Impact. So this is me, um, I think last week, going in and redeeming the code for in, in Genshin Impact to get free stuff. Uh, that code is specific to me, by the way. You can't, you can't see it. But once you redeem it in the game, you'll get a mail with... Just a bunch of free stuff. So this is more Fragile Resin and some Mystic Enhancement Ore. And if you play Genshin Impact, you know how nice it is to get stuff in the game. Uh, so this is this is one of the cool things. You'll see, by the way, that like they they do this frequently. Like that this updates on a regular cadence. Uh, you get these different codes. And so uh, I would just ask that you take a look at the description. If you like playing Genshin, if you want to try Genshin, Go get your free code. Um, and again, it's exclamation mark Prime Gaming uh, in the chat to get a link over there. But go get your free code to get stuff in Genshin. And thank you to Prime Gaming for sponsoring the show. It's been really cool. They've also been sponsoring some of our Genshin content um, as of late. And so I, it's the easiest thing in the world to have them sponsor us because it's literally like just go get free stuff in games that you love. And this is an example of that. So thank you to Prime Gaming for sponsoring us. Please go get your Genshin code. Get your free stuff in Genshin. Have a good time. And uh, stick around after the show because I'm going to be streaming some Genshin, and we're going to try to get uh, Ito's sword, uh, which I don't I don't have yet. Uh, we we need to get it ahead of 
resin refresh tomorrow, which is Mark and my Genshin show, so that we can talk about it. So I can Mark yell can about you being it. a whale. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think we're ready for our next caller, Mark. Off he goes. Uh, thank you to Clarinut, to Monster, gifted 10 subs, by the way. That was very, very generous of them. Uh, happy holidays. Badger Yar, uh, Unwritten Tales, who uh, resubbed after, I guess, gifting to Mia. Uh, Warden Winter and oh, Wait Waylid Waylid Waylitted. Uh, I know there's an eight in there. I don't know how to pronounce it. Wait lit. Wait lad. Wait lid. Wait lid. Wait lid. Uh, Evie Fighting is here. Evie Fighting, where are you calling from? I am calling from Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Have you been on the show before? I have been on the show before. All oh, right, nice. Well, welcome yeah. back. I was pretty sure you had been. Uh, what do you want to talk about uh, tonight? Well, this time I want to talk about the really special thing that we saw this year with 100 Thieves roster and how it's the first time we've seen a modern champion who genuinely has had a core of developmental players, you can say NA or not with the whole Oceania thing, who've been built up and then they've taken the imported on top and become champions instead of the traditional champion model of just sort of buying all the big name players at once that we've seen with TL when they get their championships and TSM. This is the first time we've really seen a proof of concept of that on the championship level. And even though the credit really goes largely to Golden Guardians, I think it's something that we all just need to appreciate that it's really cool we got to see this year. No, I mean, I think, I know that, uh, Mark, I, I think I asked you earlier if we had a 100 T uh, take. This, is, this was for you, cr specifically crafted for you to ramble about 100 Thieves. Let's do it. 100 Thieves is the best. I love Nade Shot. I'm, I, I'm getting their drop every time. I'm just there, and I'm hitting up uh, StockX to make sure if I miss it, I spend money on their other apparel. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. I, I mean, I think... <laughs> I know I just mentioned them within the context of, like, the the import stuff, but, like, this, this was arguably the year of 100 Thieves, you could say, right? their pop-off and uh, breaking the record, making history of winning LCS finals. I think that this is a, it's a really, really huge thing that people may forget uh, just because they have never had the like level, they're a relatively newer team, they've never had the, the level of fandom around them that, for instance, TL, TS, or TSM and C9 have. And so I'm very curious to see where people are at going into lock in and all that stuff for them next year because uh they didn't make major changes arguably because they didn't have to compared to all the other teams and so people haven't really been paying much attention to them um but no i i think i think this was a a really big story in 2021 and i'm glad that we're kind of touching on it in a couple different ways across some calls uh what do you yeah. think mark uh i mean i'm mostly on board i was i was very pleased with with 100 thieves growth over the year i think they had a, a more up and down year than people might necessarily remember with like a very strong lock-in showing and then like a kind of collapse in spring you could call it to finding their footing again in summer like it wasn't just like a flat like they're good and then they win um they had a lot of ups and downs and had to kind of fight through some things um uh, i like their general like org approach with having 100 Thieves next guys ready to go. It makes this next year exciting that they have uh, Kenby and Tenacity still around and, and, you know, pushing and trying to get some playing time. Uh, overall, uh, I'm excited for them. And I think they uh, won't win another title next year. That's your hot Actually, take? Do you think they'll win yeah. Lock-In? Maybe. I can see I guess it. we'll talk about it on the next episode, not there. But... Yeah, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I don't even know if I believe that. I just felt like saying it. <laughs> Uh, what do you, what do you think, Evie, of them? Are you a Hundred Thieves fan now? I mean, I'm a fan of their project. I'd like to see it go further. I'm actually not a huge fan of the like leadership and the way the administration conducts themselves. Like the culture doesn't really click with me. But I like the way they play. Um, and I just want to see more of it going forward. I want to see them continue to develop. I want to see them actually try and sub out uh, someday. I hope like their talent actually gets chances at 100 Thieves next, because as great as they did sort of with NA talent this year, it wasn't really like their promotions and whatnot. They did just sort of bring it over from Golden Guardians. And if they really want to become a legacy brand like TSM, C9, those teams didn't become so famous and get so much following because they won once. 
they became so famous because they won over the top year after year after year after year. And hopefully we can see players like FBI achieve the sort of same thing with 100 Thieves so they can get the same kind of success. In five years, we can look at a FBI like a double lift. But Yeah, I think uh, one thing that is worth pointing out is that they won... Okay, I just said all that great stuff about Hunter T, right? So I can I can I can ask you this question, Mark. Mark, do you think that this was the the least popular lineup of players to ever win an LCS title? Mark, wait, what was the question? Oh my god, welcome back. Uh, do you think this is the least popular lineup of players to ever win an LCS title? No, easily twenty seven, twenty sixteen spring CLG. I would, I, would I think. mean, that had like Aphromoo on it, who yeah. at the time was very popular. Hookie like, again as a mid laner, Dixie as an eighty carry. Dart was it Darshan top still? Darshan top still, right? In Smithy. And they were they were popular. I feel like because they were just coming off of winning summer twenty fifteen. I know Double Lift had left, but yeah, I mean th those players were popular, but none of them were. I mean, I'm I'm trying to account for like respective popularity from the era, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. adjusted for inflation. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to adjust. Otherwise, it's not possible, bro. Matches were getting 300,000 views yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in, in yes, 2015, yes, yeah. 2016. You know, like if if you're talking about raw numbers, like it's it doesn't fucking matter. But like if you're comparing someday to Darshan, like respectively, I think maybe someday carries a little bit more clout, you know, like internationally and stuff. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but like Closer has a much more active social media game with a lot of Turkish fans who care a lot. Whereas Smithy, people have always liked. He's a very nice guy, but he doesn't really have a brand. Yeah. Um, Six A and Huhi were relative no names that people didn't even want on that fucking roster at the start of the year. They were pissed that Po Belter and Doublelift were kicked. And Afro was the one person who was a bit of a superstar, you could say. Um, so you know, it, it's a it's a valid question. I do think you know, hundred th this hundred thieves lineup is probably one of, one of the least popular. But I w I would argue. You know, respective to players at that time, with how popular other players were, that CLG lineup did not have a lot of star power. Because, like, even Expecial was still around then, you know? Like, Expecial was was as popular as some of those guys back then, you know? Or, like, more popular than Afro in some ways, I'd even say, coming off the TSM thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I uh... every, Everyone is still, like, three or four times X everyone from the last three years. If you look at like Dean, Stara's, Dean and well, Stara's not a good example. X Smithy is still too X closer on Twitter, but like uh, X Smithy played for how long in the LCS versus closer, and like it's you can't look at X Smithy's numbers now yeah. versus yeah. So I get it, but I, I the the closest I would come, and I don't even know if I agree with this, but the closest I would yeah. come is to say that it's tied for that CLG team. Like the reason I thought about this was it's not to like dismiss Hunter T. But I just, I liked what you pointed out about to, to Evie, where it's like, okay, like this is step one. Like winning summer was a big deal for them. It was historic. I, I wish people paid more attention to it, but I think part of the reason people haven't paid as much attention to it is like, this is like the step one and like establishing these players as, as folks that people want to care about. And this team is like a team that people want to care about. And, um, and I, I, so I think it's like, the question is, will we think of 2021 as, you know the the start the the big the start of it all for Hunter T like their their legacy really launching and building off of this or will it be what Mark is afraid of which is that they don't do anything they don't win next year and like perhaps people just well, think of it as like oh yeah that was that year where like Team Liquid randomly lost to Hunter T or something. I'm having fun debating this because we're still going back and forth with Twitch chat. Someone says you just want CLG shit on CLG go home. No. I'm just saying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think about this, and I think this is the only roster you could conceivably put up against this hundred thieves one, right? Unless there's another one I'm thinking about. I I'm missing because early on it was TSM, and then it was the C9 ones, which were very popular. Um, TSM and C9 were, were super popular for the, for the entire beginning of the league. Then CLG finally started winning. They won those two back to back. Then it was back to TSM. Then it was Team Liquid, but it was Team Liquid led by Double Lift, who is like the face of the LCS. And he, he led them through their next four. And then it was back to some TSM stuff, right? And some C9 stuff. 
You pretty much almost always had double lift or Bjergsen winning. Aside from the modern C9, which had like Zven and Niski and Blabber, like maybe some of those ones are close. Yeah. Yeah, GGU, GGU didn't win. If they won, they would they definitely would have been the least popular ever. Uh oh, did I lose you, Mark? No, no, my I don't know. My my camera's just flickering. That's good. Uh yeah, I don't know. Like I feel like it's between CLG and this Hundred Thieves. You're probably right now. I, th I think you're probably C9 right. C9 2020 was Impact, Blabber, Niski, Zven, and Vulcan, right? I believe it was Licorice. Oh, Licorice, that's right. Ooh, maybe that's a good point then. Yeah. Licorice wasn't huge yet. Mm -hmm. Swapping out Impact for Licorice does make that a potential. I don't know. I just feel like just the fact that they were on C9, they were inheriting so many base fans, like as players. And I'm not trying to say like team versus team, but I just think like they were popular because they were on C9, whereas like the Hundred Thieves players didn't don't get that immediate buff. So no, it's Licorice close though. Sixty viewers right now, Licorice. So he's not. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Licorice I mean, I don't know is when definitely he, when he not. That stream on. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but I do think it's between those three. It's a good call out about the C9 2021. Uh, EV Fighting, thank you so much for the call. I'm glad you, you brought up 100T again because they do deserve credit for what they did, and I, I'm i curious to see what they do in next year. But maybe we'll have some speculation about that in the new year on our, our next episode. Is there anything you want to shout out uh, before we say goodbye? Yeah, I just want everyone to remember that during this holiday season, we have to keep in mind what's really important. There are a lot of children sitting on Santa's lap, you know, writing him letters, hiding under the sheets at night, crossing their fingers, hoping to get the one thing they really want. And it's not just nailing to our laptop. What they really need this holiday season is a cat for Kobe. Is he permaban? Did you permaban him? Uh, so our show is now winding down. Mark, what are you doing for the holidays? Are you gonna, you? Uh, me and Ashley are going to visit our family. Nice. Well, I'm. I'm. I hope you get to enjoy them. Uh, and get enjoy we're, we're your. We're bringing the cats break. up with us. Yep. Could yeah. never. Could never live without my cats. So you know. When are you getting back? Will we get to hang out before the, the new year? Sunday, I think. I think we're coming back Sunday. Oh, okay. Going so up Thursday. Maybe we'll hang out next week. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. For for resin refresh. Yes. Uh. Yes. Whatever. Anyway. Um. Very good. Well, hey. I hope everyone has a great holiday. Mark, anything you want to shout out? Uh, no, just shout out my Twitch stream, the Mark Z, the same as my Twitter, T H E E Mark Z. I've been streaming Genshin. I'll probably do some VOD reviews of uh, JoJo Pune and Academy because I haven't done him yet. So, are you gonna I'm, record? I'm, I'm gonna uh, you have another Genshin video that you're gonna make for the channel. Yeah, I'm right? gonna record that one, but I assume it won't come out for a couple of weeks. So I'm not gonna shout it out quite yet. Well, it has to come out next week. Well, it'll come out next week, then. I'll shout it out next week. Okay. Well, we don't do the show next week. Oh, darn it. I'm just... We have to... I have to make sure all this stuff hits before the end of the year. Yeah, no, no, I know. I was I was memeing about setting up how... Oh, well, I guess I won't shout it out. I'm lucky. Yeah. Very good. Um, anyway, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everyone, for watching in uh, 2021. Uh, I know we've kind of had, like, a slower December. Obviously, we missed last week. Um, but I th I'm hoping... I'm hoping that we get to come back next year with a vengeance in, in January that Mark and I both have this moment to recuperate, that all you guys get a chance to recuperate and uh, that our callers next year are better than ever and everything's fantastic and uh, no one feels bad. Uh, that is my hope. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy your holidays. Uh, this has been Hotline League episode 201.